So now that's a finish. Welcome back to the channel, folks. We're gonna be putting, putting? We're gonna put a surfboard finish on my pencil river table. If you missed me make that river table, here's a sneak peek. Because we need to sort of fix this to that. <laughs> Now this table was actually, actually it is my best performing project, video. It's been left in my workshop for absolutely ages. It's been kicked about, moved around all over the place. Um, really, it's just been bashed and dented, scratched and scorched. It's just been neglected. Um, and I had a really, well, kind of a good finish on it when I finished the table uh, years ago. Um, but I want to do it again, but this time I want to show you how to put on an expert surfboard finish. This is going to be the best finish that you can get on a river table. Um, and for that, I'm going to be taking it down to Entropy Resins. And we're going to see how the experts do it. Know what I'm saying? So as you can see, this table's been kicked in the corner. As you can see, it's got scratches on it, marks on it. I've sanded it down uh, a few times with a view to to get it not looking nice again. Um, I've just never got around to it, really. So today what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna take this table down to Entry Resins HQ and, and see what they can do. But this thing weighs a ton, so it's gonna be fun getting it down there. Right, so I'm on my way to Entry Resins. Let's get this table finished jubbly, bubbly. Well, actually, we don't want any bubbles in it. To you, to you, to me. <laughs> right, it's in. Now we can take it upstairs and let the magicians work their magic. This is the way. <laughs> into the lab, the layers lab. <laughs> this is where it all happens. It's where the magic happens. It's where the magic happens. Let's see this transformation. Right, so we're gonna uh, prep up the table ready for the finish. And uh, what have we got here? Well, this is uh, really neat. All it is, is a few bits of scrap ply with a clamp, four screws on, holding some 120 grit oh, on nice. a bit of camping mat. Oh. So it kind of- And you made this? Yeah, it's an easy, <laughs> it takes 10 minutes, you know, to make it. I've got three of them with different <laughs> grits on, you know, and they do make, you know, a nice finish. So you've got, uh, obviously you're gonna wear a mask when you're doing this. Um, but you can see now the 120 grit finish as compared to the 320 grit finish, which is just too fine. Yeah. Just too fine to get a really um, sound, successful bond. But it's all right? about those nice peaks and troughs that you're creating with the scratches. 
the epoxy will fall into those and give a really strong bond. Whereas if it's finer, you know, you get a polished finish. You don't get as assured a good bond with it. And I'm also following the grain slightly, you know. If you're doing this on bare wood, you definitely want to follow the grain. Right, so we're just going to go and look at some surfboards because this is the type of finish that we're going to get on the river table. Wow, look at these. See, now that's a finish. This is typical of a hot finish, but it's been flattened back to eggshell. Right. So that's the kind of clarity we're expecting on the table. And that would ju yeah, just nice. be flooded with uh, yeah. the epoxy we're going to use. That is nice, that isn't it? This again has been flattened back to eggshell. This is made of old whiskey barrels. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. Made of old whiskey barrels. Yeah. But I would expect that this is the kind of gloss yes. and the finish you're going to. You know, if you're going to be happy with that. Yeah, I think so. I think I that's mean, going to be what we're after. Of course. Yeah. If it's not level, you could flat it back and then polish it again. Yeah. Like you've done already. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, I like that. I think that's yeah. going to be a really nice finish for the yeah. table. But uh, yeah, these are. This is definitely going to look really nice. So it's looking good. Sanding is done, and we're just cleaning off the table now, ready for the finish. Right. So we've got a little hole in the table here, natural hole, but we're going to have to fill that first before we uh, put the finish on it. So just out of interest, why do we need to fill that hole before we put the uh, finish on there? If we were to fill it beforehand and we put a gloss coat of epoxy over the surface, it's going to end up with a divot. So right. if we can fill the hole beforehand mm -hmm. and then flat it back with a fast curing epoxy and then we'll be able to get a nice flat surface over the entire area. Okay, perfect. I didn't know that, but I do now. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're going to do is brush coat this, almost like the hot coat on a surfboard. And with that, you'll find that the epoxy will fall off the edge here and run onto the ground. Unfortunately, it'll also curl around. It'll create loads of little raindrops, which are really bad to get off once it's cured. So we're going to solve that just by masking up, just underneath the edge here, just all around the edge. Like right, that. and that stops stops what the raindrops from forming. It doesn't stop the raindrops, but they. Form oh, the I see what tape. you mean. Yeah, of course. So yeah. You can get the so you can just pull them straight. Oh, well, that yeah, makes. So, I've seen all these like tables before, and they've got all these like stalactites like, all over the place, and yeah. they must take them ages to get yeah, them off. Yeah, yeah. So. So you just put that on. Yeah, yeah that's perfect, a, isn't it? That's a, a top, good trick. Just a top tip for the sake of a top few tip. minutes. Yeah. Of masking. And then I suppose you just pull, pull the tape off and then you've got no yeah. sanding to do. Well, you, 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 Happy might, days. you might have to go off over a little bit. With a razor knife. Yeah, you know, but nothing major. It just come off easily. That is absolutely amazing. I never knew that. Yeah. Now you do. Simple thing really, these are inexpensive white haired brushes, they're fairly cheap, but they do have a habit of the hairs popping out of them as you're using them, and they're the perfect thing to apply the epoxy onto a vertical. But the way to stop that is to just put the brush in a vise and nip up the bridle, the metal bridle on the brush, and that holds the bristles in a lot better. <laughs> Top tip.
Wow, I never knew that. <laughs> We're getting lots of tips today. <laughs> right, so the finish on this has started and it is looking pretty awesome. I wanna show you folks the products that we're using because they are very similar to the stuff that I used. It's all entropy, but it is slightly different. Let me show you. <laughs> right, David, show us the stuff that we're using today. Okay, so we're using a surfboard uh, coating epoxy. Clear, clear laminating resin and clear laminating extra fast hardener. This is the epoxy that's used by every surf dude out there <laughs> that's uh, hot coating a surfboard. And it's got brilliant flow characteristics. It's nice and thin, low viscosity, and it's perfect for coating the table. Not for casting it. The casting product is for the casting. This is a great coating product. So the casting stuff is the stuff that I use, uh, folks, which is this stuff, as you've seen yeah. me use on the channel. So this is what the table's been made with, and then this is what we're gonna use to finish it. Very similar products, but this one, what, it goes off a bit faster. A bit faster. And it's just made it, it slightly differently, it flows a bit better. And it's, it's specifically formulated for that thin film that you want from the coating. Which is ideal, yeah. yeah. And it is going on really, really lovely. We've got Hamish under here doing some absolutely awesome work. Look at this, look at this. This is just looking so cool. And it's now giving that real perfect shine and 3D effect that we want. Um, I love it, it's looking really, really nice. I'm looking forward to doing the top. <laughs> well, we're gonna do the exciting bit first, not first, but next, <laughs> and uh, do the front of the table. And I wanna watch how this goes on, because this, this is looking so, so nice. So, uh, good bit on the brush. You can, see, you can see actually as the brush is going, look at the clarity as the brush goes past. It's almost like acrylic. It is, isn't it? Wow. That almost is like it was cast in perspex. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta say, that's really impressive. Thanks. Yeah, no, it's, really, <laughs> it's a really lovely piece of work. Thank you. Uh, but actually, the you know this is kind of almost making it come alive. Yeah, isn't it is, it? isn't it? Yeah, that's what it needed because it's yeah. been sat in the workshop for such a long time, and you know, it just uh, this felt a bit, felt a bit like gutted that it was just sat there and doing nothing. This will run on the vertical. Yes. So you know, brushing it down like this, you can right. do that for a long time because it's got no solvent in it. You know, it'll brush out really nicely. You can see actually, Nick, this is a good thing, is that if you watch this look, you can get the light against that little bit as a for instance look. That initially you brush it out quite hard, you want to use, bend the bristles of the brush and the idea is to pop the air bubbles. And look at the, the, mm, the brush mm. lines, but actually look how they just blend in. Yeah, they do, don't they? They just completely vanish as it flows out. Yeah, that is nice. Tiny little brush here there. It's looking beautiful. Just to remove any air bubbles. Warm and slightly. Speed up again. Okay. You can see the original part of the casting, and when we've sanded it, you've gone through to some bare wood here. Yeah. And you know, you've got a distinct difference, difference in, in coloration, yeah, because that's actually, obviously got epoxy on it, and that's just wood. Yeah, yeah, but when you brush over the two, It blends in nice. It does blend in quite nice. Given a bit of time, yeah, that will blend in. That up on. Can you pick yeah. it up against the light there? Oh, hang on. Yep. All right, I got it. So, so obviously we just started to coat the top of the table, and we've noticed just this little area. And I've got this. I have this sometimes on my projects where the resin just doesn't quite sit in that area, it sort of separates itself. Um, and a few of you viewers watching may know what I'm talking about. So we're gonna tell you now how to solve this. So we, we call that um, a fisheye. It's actually scientifically, it's surface reticulation, but you can refer to it as a fisheye or a painter's holiday or lace curtaining effect, something like that. It's all to do with surface contamination. 
And that might be from your fingers, from your arms, from sweating while you're sanding. It could be from something else like somebody spraying WD-40 or some kind of contamination somewhere else in the workshop. If you get that, the easiest way to get out of it is a tiny little bit of clean grit paper. That's just 120 grit paper. And just sand that area and effectively sand the epoxy into the contamination, in effect. Okay, so we're just sanding, what was that, 120, yeah? It's 120 grit. Yeah. If we so brush just... it again, if we brush it again, uh, you'll see that that disappears. Ah, okay. So that's another top tip. It's kind of a, it's kind of not ideal, but it's a get out of jail, get out of without jail, a yeah. lot of grief. Without a lot tip. of yeah. yeah. No, that's a no. good idea. That, I yeah. mean, I would have not have thought of that. So you, you see it occurring here as well. Look, you see. Yeah, there's some there. bits there. Yeah. So if I do the same again there, got to be clean grit paper. Yeah. And then just so you can see it, just go that way. You see it's completely disappeared. Oh, yes, yeah. And same here, yeah. you know, where I was before. Yeah. And then obviously the lines, the brush lines will eventually go out, out anyway, in, won't yeah, they? Yeah. They'll settle so in. So there's another little one there, look. Yeah. 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 <laughs> We've got a bit of contamination. So there's a bit of contamination on the table. So how do we avoid doing that then, you know, how do we avoid having this problem throughout the whole table? So once you've sanded and prepared your whole table, you can degrease it with a solvent. You need to make sure that you use a very pure, clean solvent, not a recycled solvent. So we do use acetone or um, uh, pure alcohol, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, but make sure we use these bottles so that the solvent comes out onto the cloth. Right. Yeah. So that you're never wiping the surface. Yeah. And then introducing that onto the top of a bottle of solvent and turning it upside down because right. then the contaminant that you're picking up off the surface. Yeah, of course. You contaminate your whole solvent. So yes. these sort of bottles are gently on, and then you can wipe over the surface, and it helps to remove to remove any contamination that might be on there. It does end up changing the colour of the yeah. As you pick so there's up, definitely pick stuff on it. Yeah. Even though we have cleaned this already, um, you know, and wiped it down, there's always room for improvement. And this is yeah, definitely looking better.
I hope you enjoyed our little tutorial to show you how to do this. Uh, you can find links below for where to get the resin and if you haven't seen the full video of me making this, I'll leave a link below for you as well. Thanks to the team from Entropy. Yeah! <laughs> Thanks very much for having me down and doing this for me. It's absolutely amazing. I love it. And uh, yeah, really appreciate it. Well, that's it for this one, folks. I just want to jump in quickly and say, don't forget, Makers Central is like three weeks away, probably less than that now. I'd love to meet some of you if you're coming. Come and find me. I'll be on the Maker Central slash how to merch stand and come and say hi. I'll be there all weekend. So maybe we can catch up for a cheeky beer or orange squash. And also we've just launched the latest how to update. It's on the app store. So please check that out. If you can't find it under how to, please check Maker Central. Just type Maker Central in the search bar on the app store and it will find it. Thanks for watching this one, folks. If you did enjoy this one, please share and give me a thumbs up. It really does help me in the channel. Stay tuned for the next one, folks. I'll see you all soon. Take care. Yeah.